Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to introduce something that is different from the uh, things that I normally do. And indeed, this is uh, an aircraft uh, uh, equipment, which I will explain what it does. Uh, but first, let me say that uh, it took me several years to collect all the things that you are seeing. There are several indicators, uh, control panels, loop antenna over there, this uh, uh, big uh, antenna that uh, I will open later and show you, manuals, uh, tuning cords, receiver itself and inverter. So this is a, a very uh, special project for me since uh, uh, as I said, it took me several years. So let me start to introduce one by one the items and explain a bit what they do. Well, this uh, receiver, which is actually a receiver, is uh, the core of this equipment. The uh, code of this equipment is AN slash ARN uh, minus or dash seven, which is uh, a development of ARN six, which is the DC voltage uh, supplied version and a bit uh, simpler than this. This is actually supplied by 150 volt, 400 hertz. And this is the reason why I have this uh, inverter, which is uh, a sort of dyno motor which produce actually AC voltage. So it's actually an inverter or converter if you, prefer, if you prefer. So the receiver itself, it's capable to receive voice or CW signals from 100 kilohertz up to 1750 kilohertz. So 1.75 megahertz. And it actually, uh, as uh, you can see here, voice or continuous wave. And it actually receives as a normal radio. And you have a, a sort of S meter. And here is the scale. So nothing strange, except that it drives the receiver through a mechanical uh, tuning cord which uh, is a flexible cord, which turn internally, uh, I believe, uh, uh, tuning capacitor, but I don't know because uh, I still have to open the receiver and it is untouched uh, from when I have received it. Uh, the only thing that I worked on, it is this controller, this control box, which uh, I thought initially to save it, but then I have found this for a reasonable price, so I decided to use two to have a good one. The, this unit, uh, the purpose of this unit is to uh, display over these uh, indicators the direction of the, the incoming signal or the tuned signal. And the purpose of that is to uh, allow to uh, pilots or radio operators to uh, define the direction of the aircraft. And this system is the dead of low-range system, long-range navigation system. Indeed, it uses uh, no uh, frequency radio beacon to uh, sign on a map the direction of the, the incoming signal. So the operator can uh, sign on the map the uh, direction and then uh, define the direction of the aircraft itself. I will explain it's more in depth. Uh, the way that it works for two operator uh, devices uh, I mean, control box. 
Uh, it uses two uh, mechanical uh, tuning cords. There is a, a TEE uh, connection, then a third mechanical uh, wire goes to the uh, receiver itself. And then there is a, a big box con contains a lot of relays. The name is BK22, which is actually driven by this push button, which uh, switch the control from one to the other uh, control box. Uh, since I don't have uh, those uh, mechanical uh, uh, tuning cords, I can't um, equip this unit as for two operators uh, uh, set. But instead, I will uh, prepare the one operator set, but with two uh, instrument, uh, these two instruments uh, in working condition since the receiver itself, uh, it's, uh, no, it normally drives uh, one or two meters uh, in parallel without any problem. So it would be more pretty to see that both uh, instruments are indicating and they match. So let's go ahead with the project and let's start to do something. Let's give a look to the inverter. And as you can see, it's not in a very good shape. Here are, there are the two shock absorber that should hold this uh, electronic circuit from this side. And not sure about the vacuum tubes, if they are the right uh, model and uh, they are good. And clearly here is missing something which uh, I believe should hold uh, those vacuum tubes. Uh, there will be the chance that in the manual there are something about that. And I have seen that here is missing something. And this uh, I have purchased uh, separately and I have uh, added later after then I, when I have received it since it was missing the filter and perhaps uh, should be connected over there. Yeah, and indeed there is a, uh, in the terminal strip over there, uh, one uh, missing wire. So, uh, it's a bit sad. And I'm not sure that you can see it, but there is a very huge bow here. So, what I believe I will do, I will, uh, remove this uh, box and I will start to work on the motor as a first step and then uh, uh, I will be back on the electronic section. Uh, in the electronic, uh, I mean in the overhaul manual, there are all the resistive checks that uh, should be performed on the uh, various windings in the inverter itself and should be checked first if there is any leakage in the windings uh, that means that is screwed up and is not be possible to fix almost so uh, let me go ahead with the removal of the box well as you can see i have completely dismantled the inverter since I have noted that uh, this side was uh, very tarnished and I already have uh, cleaned it and I still need to clean it this. Uh, now it's, uh, it seems shining in camera, but actually it's a bit uh, oxidated. Uh, it has been uh, really difficult to remove this side uh, bolt since uh, I don't know if you can see on camera but this thread has been damaged in the past so need to be addressed this however this will allow me to get a bit of the lubrication on the 
bearings that appear to be fine. However, I've seen that uh, they are still available. They are just uh, type uh, 88501. It's uh, just a regular uh, bearing. So uh, I will go ahead and check the uh, rotor uh, resistance. So check if there is any leakage versus ground on both side, motor side and generator side, as well as the stator section that uh, must not have any leakage again versus ground. So I'll be back uh, as soon as I will have performed those tasks. Okay, I have cleaned the slip rings of the commutator over there also, and I check for ohms uh, for continuity in this uh, commutator and slip rings uh, commutator should be 0 ohm between one each child 0 0.5 ohms and this, which is okay but infinite versus ground as well as slip rings versus ground is infinite but between them is 4 ohms a bit less 3.8 and it's perfectly centered as you can see here 3.5 to 4 ohms so the rotator is okay and this is a good news so let's go with, to the stator well also yoke give uh, an infinite reading which is exactly what uh, we expect to and it reads uh, 0 0.2 ohms uh, the continuity of the windings, which is absolutely perfect. So, uh, time to clean everything and start to reassemble and fix all the other problems that I have seen. Okay, here we have a problem. Uh, measuring here, I should have a short circuit to ground. And uh, this is a thermistor which um, will open in case of uh, I believe too high temperature or something like that and uh, has in parallel this uh, resistor in order to maintain a sort of uh, continuity to ground. Now when I have uh, dismantled I have found that uh, I was suspecting the contact inside here but it was okay. The problem was uh, below here there was a lot of uh, oxidation as well as over there this is the term the thermistor itself is a pad perhaps of uh i don't know which kind of material it seems graphite but i don't know actually uh, there is uh, an insulating sleeve here uh, as well as uh, this insulating washer which uh, all together makes uh, the thermistor to be continuously to ground and uh, in case of a uh, thermal, thermal problem, uh, maybe that will open and will leave uh, this high resistor, it's 1.5K, to uh, bring down the power uh, of the generator or the inverter itself. Now, I have noted another thing. This resistor, which is a shunt resistor, is uh, tied to ground, this is the ground connection, and this ground connection lives over there. What I suspect is that uh, since uh, this might be respread over there, and since there is no ground lead coming inside this thing, I suspect that there was uh, some ground problem inside this uh, uh, side of the inverter. So what I will do, I will bring another terminal through the hole here in order to have a, a more safety ground, which, because I suspect that uh, really don't have uh, the right ground uh, path as it should. So I will be back when I will have uh, everything's done and see if the rotor is uh, doing what it should. I have reassembled the rotor together with the stator. I have 
clean it, all those things that are required to. I have also a check for uh, wearing or noisy of bearings. Seems fine, they seem fine, but uh, I'm not sure. I have also added a ground lead since, uh, yeah, it's making good continuity between this cup and the uh, stator itself. But since there is paint here and the connection with the uh, regulator units over there, it's through the mounting screws here. I'm afraid that uh, the continuity, the ground continuity path will be very low. So I just add for safety reason. Before to go ahead to reassemble all the rest, I want to check the motor with DC voltage and driving it, uh, let's say at half voltage and see uh, how noisy and hear how noisy bearings are before to go ahead and reassemble everything and then uh, discover later that I have to complete this monthly again. I have just uh, put the fan and the rear cover for, for cooling uh, reason and some rubber feet in order to reduce the vibration noise uh, on the bench. So I will make the setup and make the test. Okay, this is the setup. So I will switch on. The environment will uh, become uh, noisy, so keep care of our ears. Uh, I will set the current at 15 amps, almost. And then I will go to increase the voltage, let's say to seven, eight volts and see what it does let's start to spin current seems okay should drop a bit and indeed it does four volts it's already spinning a bit fast huh? let me increase a bit okay look at that very fast and no vibration let me switch off here yeah seems okay so let me check also the brush if they are the brushes are sparking or not so i will re switch oven over there Set 15 amps, should be okay, voltage, let's go over, wow, oh, very fast, keep here of your ears, not fast, that's perfect, very impressive. So, okay, well, clearly the motor is running very fine and I was expecting so since the uh, brushes are almost brand new and the commutator itself, it's uh, without any wears as well as the uh, sleeping rings uh, over there. So I expect that uh, this uh, inverter has a very low hours of usage. So I think that's it for this video. And I need to go ahead with the uh, repair of the uh, voltage regulation and frequency regulation uh, components. And that will be covered in the next video. Apologize uh, since now if uh, this project will take some time, but uh, as you may imagine, uh, there are a lot of components to be checked and addressed since they are almost 60 or 70 years old. So we can't go straight on and power them up. However, 
this uh, gave us a, a promising uh, start. So I will clean uh, the bench and go ahead with the repair. Uh, as well as I will go back uh, to the other projects that I am working on. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this and see you very soon.